what's up beautiful people how you guys doing today it's sunday i'm working you may hear a lot of water in the background i'm in swanee at my swanee location it's a couple of waterfalls out here little water features out here so i'm just here um today working my clients under the dryer so yesterday i posted um something about hair picking <laughs> so i just kind of wanted to talk about that a little more it's such a beautiful day today and it's sunday so i figured why not you know let's just share something else about this and um as you read the information that i got and posted it's from the mayo clinic I found it online and it's just the definition of it. So the way it kind of came up, and I just had another client recently with the same kind of situation, the same kind of thing. The hair pulling, hair picking. So it comes from, it kind of, the root of it is stress and anxiety. And I'm really, really big on giving people information and education. I'm not trying to throw any other hairstylist under the bus at all. That's not my intention. That's not my motive. My motive and my intentions are to educate clients. Clients are starving and hungry for education and information about their hair. You know, I get a lot of new clients and they are always saying they have, you know, um, sometimes they have bad experiences or they're not being educated like they feel they should be. Um, you know, they feel like when they come to, especially a licensed hairstylist, a licensed professional, licensed professional, they feel like, you know, they should be told and educated on a lot of this stuff and they feel like they're not being told and educated. So, I'm saying I know it all, but I'm saying I'm really passionate about educating people that sit in my chair, whether they're being referred to me by somebody from another stylist just to get braids or whether they're, they find me online or on Instagram or Facebook. It's my responsibility if I see hair loss, breaking, shedding, anything that I see that I think may be causing some type of problem for them with their hair, any kind of hair loss or anything like that. It's my personal responsibility. I mean, everybody goes into a profession for a reason. Like, a lot of people go into the hair industry because they're passionate about it. Some people go into, you know, become a doctor or a nurse or lawyer or whatever because that's their passion. So my passion is always trying to help other people. That's just me. Been like that since I was a kid. So it's nothing against any other hairstylist at all. I'm in the hair industry too. So the same respect that I will want is the same respect that I'll give, but I'm giving information. Because people come to me, you know, clients, and they ask. Okay, so I posted about the hair pulling, and I mentioned that a client came to me. Now, this was a brand new client, first time sitting in my chair, ever. It was her very first time sitting in my chair. Um, so she was just talking casually and just telling me, confiding in me about how she's always pulling her hair. She's always picking her hair. She's always pulling it, she said. She said that um, when she gets up from sitting down from pulling her hair, she said there's a pile of her own hair on the floor that she's pulled out. So as soon as she told me that, I knew what it was, of course, because I learned that in cosmetology school. I mean, I learned it in cosmetology school many years ago. 
So I told her what it was. So while she, I knew what it was, I wanted her to read about it herself in my chair so that if she had questions about it, she can ask me while she's in my chair. So she Googled it. I said, well, just Google, you know, hair pulling, hair picking or whatever. When she Googled it, then it came up that it's a mental health condition. She was shocked. Because number one, she didn't know it was even a thing. Like she didn't know it was a thing. She didn't know it was, you know, like an issue or a um, condition or she had no clue. And then when she saw that it is a mental health issue number two, um, that really kind of threw her for a loop as well because she's gaining knowledge about herself, something that she never knew. Something that she never knew. And she was sharing it with me, the experience was while she was sitting in my chair. A first time brand new client. Didn't know me from nobody. Was referred to me by her hairstylist. So as I mentioned in the post, she felt some type of way. She felt kind of almost betrayed is an adjective that I would probably use. And the reason why, because she told me that she, now I'm not adding this adjective on my own. I'm not assuming, I'm not coming up with my own conclusion. This is what she told me. So she said that she felt kind of betrayed because she had been sharing this part of her life with her hairstylist for many years and that there were two stylists there and that she was telling them about this hair picking, this hair pulling, this piles of hair that ends up on the floor that she she's pulling out of her own head. She's been informing her stylist of that for years. And the reason she felt some type of way and felt betrayed is because Although she's giving them all of this information, this personal information about herself, she felt like they didn't try to help her at all. When I told her to just Google hair pulling. <laughs> so it was so simple, you know, Google hair pulling. And um, I already knew what it was, but she didn't. So she kind of felt like that she didn't get the help that she deserved. So it made her feel bad and, you know, I just encouraged her to just focus on the, the matter at hand. And that is just finding out more about it. I told her, you know, that it comes from stress and anxiety. I knew that, you know, but that was about the extent of what I knew. I knew it was um, it was a condition. I knew that it was from stress and anxiety. I know that people pull their hair. Sometimes they'll pull other things too because it's like a stress reliever. Like you may see some people may bite their nails. All of that stuff is considered like a mental health condition, which is, you know, some may be shocked to learn that, but you know, as hairstylists, I can just say for myself, I learned that in cosmetology school about the, uh, I call it short for trichomania, but you see the terminology, the word um, that's in the post. So a lot of people don't know it's like a real condition that a lot of people don't know is from stress and anxiety. A lot of people don't know it's a mental health condition. So again, I'm not, anytime I post anything on my um, social media, it's about healing, 
it's about wisdom it's about knowledge a lot of times um it could be stuff like this like i just want to put more information out there because the same stuff i post is the same stuff that i'm telling my clients when they sit in my chair so i feel like it may be other people who may need to know who may you know pick their hair or may chew their nails or may bite their nails or may have these um stress relieving conditions that they don't even put it together that oh this may be considered mental health behavioral health and then i was saying in the 11th grade that i wanted to be a psychiatrist because my love for people just my love and my passion to try to help people so anything you see me posting on any of my social media it's always to help that's my intention now if people get offended by certain things you know we can't control people getting offended i mean at the end of the day god know when i post anything he know what my motive is so as long as god knows what my motive is i'm good <laughs> And people that really know me, they know I have good intentions, you know, towards people. And so my intention with that post is to help women. Because they're screaming out for help. You know, I get so many people who call me, like new clients, and they tell me about all these bad experiences. Like, I can't resolve everybody's bad experience. Because, you know, people feel hurt and they feel betrayed or whatever when they're um trying to support somebody and then they have a really bad experience so um, i try to treat people how i want to be treated i'm not perfect either never said i was but i do have a love for people i've been like that since i was a kid so this whole posting about your hair and me vlogging this is something that i feel in my heart that god is telling me to do is vlog and that's what i'm gonna do like whenever I feel in my heart, God is telling me something, telling me to do something, trust and believe, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Because uh, like my old pastor say, delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. If you tell your child to sit down and they don't sit down for 10 minutes, that's delayed obedience. They didn't obey you. They were disobedient, right? Even though, you know, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes later, they sat down. But it, it still was delayed. So, um, mm -mm. I try to, if I feel like what God is telling me to do, to do it, I can't worry about, okay, oh, how I'm going to look on camera? Oh, what people going to think? Oh, do people even like me? Oh, people used to come to my salon and now they don't. Oh, people... It ain't about me. It's about my obedience to God for me to do what he's telling me to do. <laughs> That's just me, plain and simple. Like, I'm not a complex person. I'm easy to figure out. I'm <laughs> very non-complex. So, this is what this is all about, helping women. And I'm certified in hair loss. I got a certification in that over 10 years ago. Like, because there's a lot of women who have hair loss, and they don't know why. You know, it could be hereditary, you know, it could be stress. You know, I try to explain it to women like this. Everything that you ingest that goes inside of your body, it's going to either affect your hair in a negative way or a positive way. Anything that you ingest that goes through your mouth and into your body, it's going to affect your hair in a negative way or in a positive way. And so that could be food, that can be beverages, that could be uh, medication, prescribed medication. It could be, you know, if you just had a baby or something or you had a child in the past and you they gave you anesthesia so you wouldn't feel the pain. Any of those things. It could be also stuff like lupus, different conditions like lupus. Um, 
it could be conditions like um, diabetes. It could be, you know, um, like thyroid conditions. It could be high blood pressure conditions. And a lot of times when you're prescribed medications, a lot of times you're not told that, oh, this can affect your hair or you may, even people who have had rapid weight loss or you've had a weight loss surgery or you lost weight. You know, a lot of my clients, some of my clients were doing the keto diet, the K-E-T-O keto diet. They, they was losing hair like that. And so people usually, clients don't put two and two together like women don't put two and two together. They don't know that, okay, what I eat, it can really affect my hair. Yes, it can. And so for me, as soon as I get a new client, the first thing I ask them, do you take multivitamins? And then they'll go into it. It'll either be no. It's rarely yes. Rarely a yes. Rarely. Now, I'll tell them, like, people will make, and I'll tell them, I'll say, well, I bet you're making your child take vitamins. So they'll make their kids take vitamins, but they won't. They won't take a vitamin. So either it'll be a no or either it'll be, oh, I take the hair, skin, and nail vitamins. I'm like, I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking you, do you take multivitamins? It's a difference. So nine times out of 10, the answer is no. They don't take multivitamins. And so then I'll tell them, well, first things first, you need to start taking a multivitamin. Because just like I just said a minute ago, Everything to do with our hair starts internally. Even if you're stressed out, that's gonna affect your body internally, right? The answer is yes. And the reason you can tell that stress affects your body is because your blood pressure gonna be high and then you're gonna be on some high blood pressure medication, right? And then that's gonna cause your hair to fall out and the stress too. And I'm not, I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. That's a disclaimer. I'm not either one of those. I'm a wife and a hairstylist. <laughs> Who cares enough to be honest with my clients, whether they want me to or not. I'm going to be honest and let them know. You know, I got to educate you guys. Because I see so many young girls with hair loss. And I remember back in my day when I was younger, like nobody had hair loss. I mean, a lot of the women wore wigs, you know, like the moms and, you know, they wore wigs. But when they took the wig off, they had so much hair. You're like, why you got a wig on? <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> Because I got a wig on right here. I get more compliments about this little $30 wig. And my own hair is way down here. It's super long. But super soft. And if I try to want my hair to be like this. First of all, I got to get a flexor rod set. Sit under the dryer for two hours. And then spray like a whole bottle of spritz on my hair. Because <laughs> my hair is so soft that it won't even stand up on its own like this. So I'm like, why am I torturing myself like that when I can just <laughs> put on a wig, right? <laughs> so I got a lot of hair, but it's soft. <laughs> and it's long. And if I want to wear like these natural hair, big, big, you know, I like big hairstyles. I'm gonna have to put a whole bottle of spray and spritz on my hair to uh, achieve that look. So I'm gonna just keep working with this because I get more compliments on this little cheap wig. I mean, from everybody, like every ethnic group. <laughs> everybody be, oh, I love your hair. I be like, this wig. I'll tell them. I mean, you can tell I'm from the south. I just. I've never met a stranger, and I just love people, and I'll sit there and have a long conversation with anybody. <laughs> I just love people. 
And people are to be loved. I mean, God wants us to love one another. That's how we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to do. So, you probably see more of me vlogging. Now, my husband and I, as you saw me post, we about to go to Santa Rosa, Florida, which I've never heard of. But it's down by Destin, Florida, which I've been to several times, but haven't been to in a while. They kind of call that area the Emerald Coast because the beaches, the, the, the sand is so white. And the water is like an emerald, greenish blue, turquoise, just gorgeous. And the houses are down there, just gorgeous. So my husband and I were going down there from the 28th through the 31st. So we're actually checking out on the 31st and heading back home sometime on the 31st. So I'll be vlogging from there. Um, Showing you guys the, the beach and the going zone or whatever. But anyway, um, that whole thing about the hair pulling, if you think you may have that condition, I would just recommend that you do more research on it. And I would definitely 100% recommend that you talk to your doctor about it, your general, your, your regular doctor, your general practitioner doctor. <clears throat> that you talk to him or her don't be embarrassed about it there's nothing to be embarrassed about so just tell them that you kind of discovered that you have a problem with pulling your hair hair picking, hair pulling they'll be like oh okay and it's from anxiety and all of that they'll know what it's from just like I knew you know a doctor gonna know if me just a hairstylist knows. So, um, that's what I would advise you to do for hairstylists. My advice is just to learn whatever you can, continue to take classes, continue your education, learn more about, you know, these different conditions with hair. And um, that way, you know, uh, your clients will remain in your chair because they're learning so much from you about their hair. And it's not, you know, that they just love how you shampoo their hair, how you scrub their head, or how you, um, whatever you do to their hair. It's not that they just love that, but they love the fact that you educate them too. So I just advise hairstylists to continue your education so that you can continue to educate your clients. But that's it. That's all I wanted to say today. And that I hope you guys are blessed. I know you are. Please stay encouraged. I know it's a lot going on in the world. But we, the world has made it through way worse things. So, again, when I go out of town, I'm going to be vlogging. I always like to, when I go out of town, I like to make people feel like they're out of town with me. And the reason I do that, because some people don't get to go out of town. Some people may can't afford to go out of town. Some people don't have the time to go out of town. It's different reasons, you know. Some people may not want to go to Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, but they may want to feel like they went through there or went there through me and through my posts and my blog so you guys god bless you and your family please stay safe and continue to be encouraged and i hope you learned a little bit about um this condition and if you have it if you bite your nails or you pull your hair or any of that research it yourself and then check with your doctor please let them know because they can help you with that anxiety and all the stress and and please get the help because the stress will not only um help you personally but it'll help your hair too when you're not under so much stress because your hair is going to definitely suffer so i hope i've helped you if you have any questions about this or anything just text me i mean you're on my social media if you're seeing this video but my cell number is 678-249-0261. I'm always happy to help. I'm always working. So just text me. 
or reach out to me on my social media. Again, God bless you and your family, and please stay safe, please. Thank you. Thank you for listening.